I'm Ed Morphis from uh, Grants Pass, Oregon, and the fly that I'm going to tie for you today is the fly that I call a foampy. It's a foam humpy. I was uh, fishing for brown trout, and I found out that the humpy was a great pattern to uh, catch browns with, except that the problem was that you'd usually catch one before you destroyed the fly. They have longer teeth, and so they destroy the fly. So I started looking for something more durable, and that turned out to be a foam humpy. I have caught as many as nine uh, brown trout on a single humpy, and so it's quite durable, and I think it's uh, easier to tie also. So you can use different colors with it. You, you can use... Um, uh, different colors of uh, foam, such as the gray that I'm going to use today, or you can use um, a tan, which is more like the, the natural, the normal humpy, or you can use almost any color, green, uh, almost anything, but you can coordinate then the other colors with it. So the first thing that we do is we tie on and lay down a base of thread. The materials that we will use for this are basically a, a um, the hairs from uh, moose mane uh, used for sizes 10 through 12 and I tie this on hooks uh, from size uh, 10 to 12. Um, I mean 10 to 16, I'm sorry. And, and I, um, uh, so I'll use this for 10 to 12, and then if I go to a smaller fly, I will use uh, elk mane, which works a little better for the smaller flies, the smaller hairs. And so that's the tail of the fly. The body of the fly, the, uh, the foam, we use closed cell foam, and then um, any color of floss that you uh, may want to use. Um, you can use almost any kind of floss. For this, I'm going to use the spandex uh, floss. I don't recall what brand it is, but um, uh, that's what I'm going to use. And then for the wings, I use Zelon. Zelon is the only uh, substance that I have found that really works properly for this fly. It will false cast dry in one cast, and the wings will stand up again where they, they belong. So we'll, we will um, work with that for the wings. And then the hackle, of course, is coordinated with the color of the, um, of the body of the fly, the color of the uh, foam, actually. So with this gray, I'm going to use um, a grizzly hackle. And um, so let's get started, and I will start by um, stacking a small amount of moose mane. You can use moose hair too, but I, I like the mane better. It's more consistent all the way along. We simply get the fuzz out of this and, um, and tamp it. Use about six to ten hairs. And I like a bit longer tail. It, it functions better for this fly. Um, I think most dry flies function better with, uh, with a little longer tail. And so this is about a shank and a half rather than a single shank. So I measure that and then trim it off about halfway up the, uh, the shank. I bring my thread forward to about the halfway point on the shank, wrap it in, tie it in, and then Keep it up away from the shank of the hook so that it stays on top of the hook 
we go back to the bid. Be sure you don't go further than, uh, than the level space on the shank. Otherwise, it will um, pull the tail down. The next thing we do is we put on the uh, foam. We want to be sure that we stay far enough back that we don't begin to, to crowd the head. We have to start thinking about not crowning, uh, cramping the um, head and crowding it right from this point. So now this, this comes down against the tail and it uh, depresses it. But when, when it comes up to where it's supposed to be, it's going to be all right and it will give support to the tail. Now we choose whatever color we want to use. I'm going to use a chartreuse for this and tie it in. half hitch so we don't lose the thread off the hook. While we wrap back on the body. Now we'll tie off. Trim our floss. And make sure that we have the, <coughs> the thread in just the right spot for tying down the foam. We pull the foam just enough to form the, uh, get the form that we want and not pull the air bubbles out of it. Make sure that your thread is flat so that you don't cut the um, foam, but wrap it in very tight. Then with this we can pull tight and trim it and then wrap down everything that's left there. Now, s normally we tie in a, um, the wing ahead of time, but you can't do that with this one because of the, the way we're forming the body. It would get in the way too much. So we're going to take a piece of, of Zelon and wrap it, figure eight it, And then we're going to, uh, to wrap one direction with the thread over the off side of the, uh, of the hook, if I can get it to work. It's very difficult to handle the zelon at this point. And I am having a problem with it, with my thread. Now 
Then we stand this up a little bit. And tie it in. Wrap the opposite direction on the other. And bring it up. Then we trim the length to length about uh, the way we want it, about the length, and tie in the uh, the hackle. Now I've already cut the hackle a bit long. I tie it in long uh, long enough. I cut this uh, hackle uh, of quill long enough that I can have plenty of room to tie it in and and begin tying the um, wrapping the hackle over before the barbs touch. We want some uh, naked um, uh, quill there on the, on the hook before the barbs begin to, to touch. The reason for that is that we, are, um, we don't want to distort the first barbs there. If you just, you're just wasting those and and um, pushing them to the back or to the side. <clears throat> and then we simply finish wrapping off here and find, finish the head. And we half hitch, and half hitching a dry fly, we always reach back to the hackle, push it back to straight up, and just pull it tight against the hackle, not over the hackle. And then we whip finish. Do that a couple of times and uh, you have an adequate head and you don't even really need to, to um, use head cement. And there you have with a little bit of trimming a good trout fly that is very great um, producer. My name is Monica Mullen. I am from Springfield, Oregon, and I will be tying today a March Brownie merger. This is a fly that I came up with after watching March Browns hatching on the McKenzie River. Um, we're going to start with a, it's a Targus size 10 200 hook. And we'll tie on a tail. This is just Antron yarn. And the trick to this is 
You want the tail to be just slightly past the bend of the hook, so it's going to be tilted down. You tie on one end. If you twist the, the loose end and lay it back over the shank of the hook, it's going to braid the tail of that fly. Tie down the loose end. and you have a trailing shuck. Now this fly is designed to ride straight up and down in the water, so you need to give it just a little bit of weight to tilt the back of it under the surface of the water. So we're going to put on a red fine wire, and this will act as a rib also. This wire serves a couple different purposes here. And for the body, we're going to use dyed red peacock curl. With this size fly, I usually use about three pieces of curl. And we'll wrap the peacock forward. Makes a nice fuzzy body on it. And with the red wire, we're going to counter wrap the hurl. Again, gives the back of the fly a little weight and it also locks your hurl in place where if one of them breaks it's not going to completely unwrap your fly. And we'll need to make a wing case and I'm using just Comparadon deer hair. Just take the fluff out of it and stack the tips. And when we tie this in, we want to tie the tips just slightly past the bend of the hook. And then trim off all the butts up here. And you want the deer hair to pretty much stay on top of the fly. And we'll give it a thorax, and this is just going to cover up the ends of the deer hair. This is STS dubbing, SST dubbing. Has a little sparkle in it. And to finish the wing case, brush the hair forward and make your wrap just behind the eye. And half hitch. It ties your thread down to the hook instead of the hair keeps it from coming unraveled.
and that is a March Brown Emerger. My name is Greg Lowry and I'm from Boise, Idaho and today I'm going to be tying a pattern that can be used in many different ways. Uh, the technique that I want to demonstrate is how to furl an extended body and I can use this uh, in uh, patterns for uh, hoppers, uh, crickets, squalas. Uh, I can even, uh, if I separate the threads down far enough, I can even use it for a size 22 midge. So essentially what we're going to do is start your thread on the front end of the fly, but you're not going to go very far back. You're only going to use about the upper third of this fly for tying, because what this is going to do is allow the fly to set up in the water where the body is actually going to be below the surface. What I'm going to use for the wing and head is two millimeter closed cell foam and it's just been cut in a shape to, uh, per, uh, with a wing cutter. And I'm going to tie that on facing out over the eye of the hook and with this foam you want to be sure that you don't use too much tension so that you cut the foam but you do want to use enough tension to where you bind it down adequately. And so I'll bind that down on this side get it up as close to the eye as you can, continue to bind it down, and then I take a couple of wraps underneath the foam and then back on top of it and this will lock it in and keep it from spinning around the hook. Okay, Once you have that down you're going to form the extended body and all I'm using is two contrasting colors of embroidery floss and if you even up the ends of that, what you're going to do is you're going to place those on top of the foam that you just tied in. Make sure they're very secure. And then you're going to simply hold this down and you're going to twist this to form a rope where the colors will form like a candy cane type of appearance. And you're going to twist that hard enough to the point where when you start to ease up on it, a little bit of tension comes off, it'll start to bend on its own. And that's what you're looking for. Once you have that in place, hold that and measure out the length you're going to want your body, which is going to extend just a little bit beyond the bend of the hook. And when you release that, it will twist back on itself and create your extended body. Simply clip off the excess and then bind that down on top of what you've just furled. And that's the technique we're using is furling. Bind that back down on there and that'll keep it squared up on the hook. The next thing you do is take some deer hair, which I've already clipped and stacked. And get that measured out to where it's going to extend about to the back of the hook. Pre-trim that and tie it in right on top of where you just added your embroidery floss. And I like to come back through the butt ends of that in several different positions and that will lock it in very tightly and it will also keep it from spinning around the hook. If you'd like, you can turn that fly and trim the small pieces off of there. It's not critical because most of this is just going to be covered up in a moment anyway. Lock those fibers down nice.
take your thread forward and then we're going to use uh, ice stub in this case it's the UV hot orange and the I find that the hot colors provide kind of a, uh, uh, a hot spot on the fly and you can use any color you want and surprisingly enough the colors that are that work the best with these flies are the ones that you wouldn't wouldn't think would work uh, anything that's a very good contrast uh, I've even had luck with purple and orange as a contrasting colors but making this bright dubbed head seems to also be a, a factor for this fly get enough dubbing on there just loosely wrap that forward just to cover up everything you've already done the bulk of that head will be created right there and then while you've got your thread right there fold that back come back over the top with your thread and make the head and then there's just two more steps of the fly would be the legs and what I do with the legs is take the rubber legs, fold them in half, just place two on top, two light rubs, uh, wraps with that, and then just simply pull them into place. Yeah. Pop those into place. Tighten them down, and then I use a very loose celled foam as a strike indicator to be able to find this fly because it rides very low in the water. Do a whip finish on it. And there you have an extended body fly. That will float very low in the water. And the real trick with this fly is if you take it out, what will happen is that fly will actually float with the foam right in the uh, in the uh, surface tension and this body will hang down below. If you want it to ride higher, You'll treat the wing with floatant and the deer hair will actually help buoy this up and it will set up a little higher in the water in case you're fishing faster water. So that's a extended body using the furling technique. Hello, my name is Red Hessel. I'm from Albany, Oregon. And today we're going to tie my cash fly. Cash came about uh, originally as a simple fly to tie that, that uh, didn't require any crying when you lost it in the trees. Uh, however, the name didn't come about until a fellow tire by the name of Gene Stutzman realized that one of the flies I was tying looked an awful lot like a Miller's Lake ant. So now it's cash, C for caddis, A for ant, S for stonefly, and H for hopper. It depends on how you're tying it as to what's, what it's going to be, which means that you can vary the hook and the, and the materials to suit. Doesn't really make a whole lot of difference, in other words. Okay, so we're going to uh, put a base of thread on here. Back that off just a hair. Use some of my special wax here. And we'll put dub on a little bit of, of in this case, 
I'm using a light yellow fur. Uh, it becomes obvious that if you want to change it some, you just change the color of this body. Pretty much change the color of the body, you've got anything you want. So we'll put yellow on here. Now we we'll have what could be a caddis or it could be a hopper because both are yellow. And occasionally you can come up with a yellow stonefly. So all three of the above there. Okay. So we'll wrap on the body. Uh, real quick like here. And I want it to end right about there. So I've got too much fur. After tying these for so many years, you'd think I would get this right, but it doesn't always occur. All right. We bring our thread now clear up to the eye. And we got an errant hair right here. There we go. Now, what we're going to use, you can use deer hair. In my case, I'm using elk. I was given the whole hide. And so I've got an elk hair, elk hair here. And we'll cut a piece of this off, cut some of this off, and measure it out, comb it out. I might add that, sa that you should save the fur in the base of the hair. I use a plain old dog comb, comb it all out. And you might be able to see it in this video. I've got a little bit of hair, a little bit of fur there with some hair. That later on could be used for another fly. Get some of the short hair out of here. Then we'll stack it. One of the few times I ever use a stacker. All my steelhead flies, I don't, do not use stacked hair. I want it to be tapered. But in this case, that's quite another matter. Now then, again, I've got a few short hairs that are in the way. All right. Now we're going to measure this from the eye of the hook clear out past the bend here. And you'll see why it's so far out there in the short order. Uh, after you've done this for a while, you'll be able to uh, arrange this length in no time flat. It uh, becomes easy to do. Pre-cut it. Now, we'll flip this over. And I'm only going to pitch, pinch just a little bit of this. We're going to firmly put this on top of the hook right behind the eye. If this does decide to spin a little bit, don't worry about it. It's not, it's not going to uh, change the world in the, or anything like that. Now we've got a little bit there. If we just kind of go through that a little bit, now it's spread out. Pull the wing over the top tie it down right behind what is now the thorax. Throw a whip finish on here. I do like Mitch's bobbin twirler. This makes putting uh, a, a whip finish on a whole lot easier. We'll turn that off. You're going to put a drop of head cement right on the top there. If you have an errant one, you can probably see that little errant hair right there. Just trim it down. Now you've got the legs right here. You've got a head for like if a hopper pattern or anything else. You've got a wing, which if you look at it in in the uh, a silhouette is proper. You've got the body, and that is it.
Hi, my name is Barrett Christensen. I live in Eugene, Oregon. I'm the head tire for OregonFlyFishingBlog.com. Uh, today I'm going to be tying the Barrett's Bass Blast and Assassin, a uh, very important pattern for invasive species removal, namely largemouth bass and smallmouth bass. I'm starting today with a B10S Stinger from Gamagatsu. I've got some 140 denier uh, thread from Ultra Thread. I'm going to lay a nice thread base down the hook shank all the way past the, where the barb would be up onto the serious bend of the hook. Uh, the reason for this is that we're going to tie in a piece of 30 pound mono as a weed guard. So I'll take my thread clear on back here to the bend, remove my tag. I'm going to lay that piece of 30 pound mono uh, right on the bend area. We're going to make sure that that's in there nice and tight. Don't want that thing breaking off later on. So I'm covering up essentially about three quarters of an inch to an inch worth of that 30 pound mono. Now I'm going to rotate the hook, give myself a level playing field, and I'm just going to take that piece of mono and tuck it into my material holder, get it up and out of the way. First step to this fly is to tie in the rear skirt. Uh, I'm going to use a piece of purple and black silly leg. I'm going to rotate that around the hook shank and tie it completely, the entire piece completely on. I've got you know kind of a big bulky tie-in area there. I'm going to tie in next a piece of black and pearl cactus chenille in the large size. Uh, not only is this going to add some internal flash, it's also going to help flare out some of the materials as well. Usually this is about three wraps of that material. Next I'm going to take the same color piece of silly leg and I'm going to tie that in just ahead of that little black pearl puffball. Cover that one up as well. I'm going to take another piece of black cactus chenille, tie that in on top. Again, that's going to be about three wraps. I have one more skirt to go, but I'm going to move my thread forward up towards the eye and I'm going to tie in an extra large plated lead eye. Extra large seems a bit big for most fly tying applications, but we're fishing what amounts to a jig and pig here in the bass tournament bass circles. So we need a bunch of weight. We want that fly to get down as quick as possible. We'll figure out that lead eye on. We'll take our thread back just behind again. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tie in just a solid black with bur uh, blue flake in it skirt. And then I'm going to take a third and final piece of the cactus chenille. and tie that in right behind the eyes. About three wraps again. I'll tie that material off behind the eye. So the final step in this fly is taking the piece of 30 pound mono that we tied in at the beginning we're going to thread that through the eye of the hook. Make sure those skirts are out of the way. You're going to draw it in and give yourself just enough distance so that when you would drag this fly, say across the front lawn or a tule mat or something like that when you're actually fishing, that the hook point's not going to get stuck in the vegetation. So I've secured a couple wraps in front. 
it would be tied down at this point, but I've found that if I loop that mono over the actual eye itself, that I get a little bit more life out of the fly, uh, making it a little bit tougher, 30 pound mono over those eyes. We'll just snip that off. Final step, grab your whip finisher. There is a completed Barrett's Bass Blastin' Assassin. Uh, make sure you do your part to remove invasive species. Hello, my name is George Hadley. I'm from Salem, Oregon, and I'm going to be tying a smallmouth bass fly for the John Day River, and we just call it the John Day Special. We're using a 6-aught, 8-aught thread, and uh, you can use either 6 or 8. I'm using 8-aught uh, right here. I am laying on a thread base just so that the material does not slip around on the uh, shank of the hook. I'm going to wrap the thread back to the bend of the hook and then I'm going to take a uh, red hackle and tie that in for the tail and I'm going to take and uh, strip off the marabou part and just use the, the uh, strip off some fibers to, to form the tail doesn't have to be very large, it's just all we're trying to do is uh, build just a little bit of red color in, in the tail of this fly. We're just going to wrap that extra material down to uh, help build up the body. At this point we're going to tie in some mylar braid and it's just uh, kind of like a real thick string but it's uh, just a braided material. We're also going to lay it down to continue to enlarge the body of the fly. We're going to wrap that back to the bend of the hook, wrapping forward so that that forms uh, just a little bit larger bulk on, on the uh, fly. We're going to wrap forward with the uh, braided mylar hair and this is a gold braid simply going to wrap it forward and this is forming the body of the fly very slim this fly can be tied in uh, with weight on it it's what I'm going to do or without the weight and uh, you use the uh, the uh, weighted flies for higher water and uh, the uh, unweighted flies for when the water is really low. And I have some bead chain. This is a, just a regular large bead chain, not extra large, but just large. And I simply cut off two eyes, two beads, and I'm going to tie them in near the eye of the hook. Just using a cross hatch to help hold those in place. And you got to be a little careful because every once in a while there's a sharp edge on the beads from the bead chain. And you're getting wrapping it around here and it cuts your thread right off. And that makes you feel kind of funny. 
Now I'm going to rotate the fly upside down so that I can put on the underwing, which is simply some Antron. And we'll just cut off a little piece of Antron here to form the underwing. Give it a little bit of a Antron haircut there. It going so wild that you can't control all that stuff. So we'll just do a uh, little soft loop on that. Wrap in that underwing. We'll take a little bit of elk hair, which is just natural elk hair, tan, just a small amount. And uh, we're going to get rid of this under fur, which is not so great. Looks like uh, we'll cut this off and stick it in backwards. Always like this because you can always make some noise. And uh, we'll just set this on here right on top of this other underwing. I'm going to tie this off. Clip off the excess here. And we'll just uh, put on a little whip finish there. And hold that down. And we're ready to go fishing for smallmouth bass on the John Day River. Get us a few more of these and we're good to go. Hi, I'm Norm Damagala. Uh, I live in Alpine, Oregon, which is a small town oh, about 20 miles south of Corvallis. And I'm going to tie a fly called the, the Hairy Bugger. And I'm using a, a four extra long uh, size eight uh, hook with the straight eye. And then I've already put the uh, the bead on there. It's a tungsten bead, a red tungsten bead, uh, one eighth inch in diameter. And uh, I like using these tungsten beads because they're they're heavy for their size. They don't take up a lot of space, and uh, they get the fly down really quick. Then I'm using the olive thread uh, for the pattern. I put a good base of thread on here, and I run the thread up to about the, even with the, the barb on the hook. And now I'll be putting the, the tail on it with, I uh, use this uh, Grizzly Marabou. It comes on a patch. I, I like using this, this product here. It's, it's a burn orange color. What I like about it is, is the, the color of the dye. It's, it's really nice. And the, the barbs on it, the, the grizzly, show up really nice. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll put one on each side. Start out. And I just leave the whole feather on there and just run the thread up the barb. 
so I get a good base on there. It makes the fly nice and tough. Kind of even it out so it's parallel with the shank. And I can just cinch down the, the marabou. I need to straighten out my fly a little. There. And then I'll run it back, get it down there nice and tight. And I'll r rotate my vise and put one on the other side. I find this is a lot better than just putting it on top. The tail comes out a lot more uniform. And then you can even out the barbs on this side so both feathers will show up the, the grizzly nice. I'll just cover a good base of thread on there, cinch it down good. And that marabou, that burnt orange color is nice. It kind of it'll show through the body and give it that nice burnt orange color. And then I'm using uh, some flash material, and it's this is uh, called Holo Fusion. It's a, it's a new product put out by this DNA company, but what it's kind of like flashaboo but it, it, it's got a good body and really nice a nice glisten to it so I'll just run it on top here and then wrap the thread forward and then wrap it back again. And then I cut it off about even with the, the marabou tail. Cinch that down good. And now I'm gonna use for, rather than using a typical tackle wrap like a typical woolly bugger I, I use this rubber product that's a uh, it's hackle on a wire basically it's a uh, it's called Swisher's wig, Wiggly Hackle it's made by Montana Fly Company and it's it gives the fly a lot of nice action plus when it's wet it kind of has a translucent color in it and it really has a good lively look so I'll just bound, bind down the wire really good. You gotta watch it to, on that end of that wire to cover it with your thread so you don't have a sharp end sticking out. It could mean problems later if you don't. I'll cinch that down real good. And now I'll use uh, some small uh, crystal chenille. This is kind of an olive color, and it's it's a real small fiber. Cactus chenille is, is kind of the generic name for it, but this is a J Fair product, and I really like the dyes he used. the The marabou I use is uh, J Fair also. Then bind that down good, and, and then wrap the chenille through. Wrap it up to, oh, just up to the bead. Tie it off. I tie this in a, in a black too. They make a, this wiggly hackle in, in black and a, also a chartreuse. Black and chartreuse is a good color to use too. I just bind that down. Now I'll wrap the, 
the wiggly hackle over the chenille and just palmer it and leave about a sixteenth of an inch space in it. What's nice, it's, it, this has got a rubber core, so it's, it's, it's tough and it, uh, it adds a little more weight to the fly. And while you're wrapping it, you want to pull these, these rubber fibers back so they don't bind down on each other. They, they do anyway, but you can pick them out when you're done with a, with a bodkin or a needle or some type of sharp tool. And I, it usually takes about three wraps, three, four wraps, and then I do an extra wrap around the head to fill it out. And then tie it off. The thing with this, the wire in this, you want to use an old pair of scissors for cutting it, and I just save a pair that I always use on a wire for, for this when I cut this off so I don't ruin your scissors because this, this wire really is hard on your scissors. What you want to do now is make sure you get that wire pushed down so I'll use my fingernail and feel it. So feel in there, see if I can, don't feel any sharp edge of that wire. And then cover it with some thread so you get that wire well covered. I've, I've had that snap my leader off before so I've, I've kind of learned learned by mis my mistakes and cover that up good. It's real important. And then I just would finish it. I do couple separate we'll finish this just to make sure it's going to be a good tough fly. Cut the thread and now here's the part where you can take a pair of scissors. I like using this little guillotine cutter they came out with for picking out that rubber because it's, it's got a sharp edge right here and it'll it'll cut that any doubled over rubber that I want to pull out. I've used this fly on the High Lakes, on uh, Diamond Lake last year. It was it was really a good pattern when there was a there was a lot of damsels in the water and uh, also some dragonflies. I think it it kind of does a good job of imitating both. And when this brown rubber gets wet, it's got a really nice color to it that kind of shines in the water, gives it a lifelike appearance. It just kind of really pushes it out when you, you can kind of see the little rubber fibers that have been kind of looped in there. Yeah, that's it. That's uh, my rubber bugger. Thank you. My name is Stan Henriksen and I'm from Seattle area, Washington, and I'm going to be tying a, a, a grub pattern today. Just going to start off and get some thread on, get it down here. Then first thing I'm going to do is tie some, some tinsel in to make a barrier for my dubbing. To 
make this go real nice I'm just gonna tie it in on the opposite side that way when you turn it around and twist it over it doesn't show the the kink in it at the bottom end so you just kind of make some four or five wraps undo it a couple and put it over and that's my little tab there for my dubbing to go behind make a couple more there to tie it in real well now there's a couple different ways that you can do dubbing one you can do a, a dubbing loop which I'll just demonstrate right here just kind of come in there and tie it off you got your loop a little bit of dubbing in here and my little dubbing tool and just twist it up that's one way of doing it Have my little tool here and what I like to do on dubbing is when I go forward with it get it where the dubbing's at is I always like to run my fingers and pull the dubbing back as I go forward so you take it and just sweep it back with your fingers and voila and clip it off I got a little bit of straggling doubling that I'll just pull off a little bit I don't want that much there we go and then I'm gonna put on a tail and I'm gonna use a uh, little blue pheasant here and what I'm gonna do is just pull the fibers up till you get to the uh, the tip of it and you just pull everything back there we go and when you tie this in you tie it in away from you off a little soft loop there and that way when you uh, fold it over it automatically goes in the right direction and I'll just fold it up a little bit well it might help if I got the material to tie in better so let's try that again And I twist my stem every time I do this and that way it it rolls over and then when you put your um, the material lays down it rotates around and makes a nice little tail for you a couple little turns in here there we go and then we'll clip it off and pretty easy make a couple more turns in there just to all right and then it calls for a little bit of dubbing here I'm gonna do a different type of, of 
I'm going to spin the uh, dubbing this time and my thread instead of making a dubbing loop. I like to do it this way a little bit more just because it will it spins a little bit easier and makes the dubbing a little nicer I think once I get my thread all square. There you go and then you take your your little tool here and open up your thread just like that and then you put your dubbing in the middle of the thread. If my hands aren't so rough There we go. And then all you do is pull it out like this and hold it up and twist it the other way. Reverse thread it. Stop it. And then when you go like that, it just turns all your dubbing up and you don't have to twist it, it does it for you. Real easy. Twist my thread back up. All right, and then we're just going to roll it forward. If you put a little bit too much dubbing on there, nice thing about it is you can just push it back a little bit and it'll be just fine. There you go. All right, now we're just going to take a little, little red feather here and give it a little bit of color. When it gets all done, if you do this right, it's going to give it a little correct color in the water, which is one of my favorite colors when I'm still at fishing. And we'll just lock this fly in place again, right there against the shank. If you lock it in there, it won't have a tendency to pull out. When you hold it up like this and fold it over, And like I said, I twist my stems on those. It just seems to give the, the material a better silhouette when you get done tying. Tie it in there a little bit. Okay. Cut her off. And now we're just going to do this with black dubbing. Have to after doing that reverse threading, we're going to have to go and turn that the other way and get it nice and flat so you can put dubbing in the middle of that thread again. very important to get this flat. If you don't get it flat, then you can't get the dubbing in there and when you go to try to do it, you're just going to knot up your thread and then you'll have a mess. And I always put it in my finger and poke it through my finger so I can see it better to make this. There we go. When you do that, your hand will go all the way down if it's flat. If not, it'll, it'll lock up. Ooh, this is a little different. Never seen this kind of dubbing before.
but it didn't work. It has more of a, whoops. My fingers are big, so you have to catch that just right. Gives them more of a hopper kind of dubbing with those extra leggy things in there, but it'll work. And then we're going to reverse thread it again. There we go. What I'm tying here today, I'm a guy that fishes, well, up to about 300 days a year I have in the past. And and for the springtime fishing, if the water is anywhere to being clear, this is a pattern I use on big rivers a lot. It's a, the silhouette is tremendous in the water. It's one of my f reasons I like tying it. Okay, pull off all the extra little dubbing there, and there we go. Now the fun part, because I'm using fibers as a buildup here, and so I'm going to be using a few of them. To uh, some people, when they tie a fly like this, they'll put three feathers in there. I like mine to be built up a little bit more than that. Just it gives it bulk, plus it gives something to really squeeze the fibers when you want to make a big silhouette. So uh, as we go along here, you'll see what I'm talking about. And when you tie this in, uh, this, this feather especially, uh, it's just off of a little little chicken hackle there, off golden pheasant really, that's been dyed. And if you don't get this fiber that you're tying in right on the shank and tie it in, lock it down. Uh, when you go to do this part, it it this by holding onto this, it'll just pull right out. If you don't lock it in, it, it it'll just pull out and be awful for you. So. The trick is to really get it locked in, and probably on this fly that I'm tying here, it'll, it'll happen to me at least once, because the locking down is so important to do. And all I do is palmer it and get the, the fibers going back, and I'm tying this in kind of a hurry. If I was doing it a little bit slower today, I would probably use less smaller fibers and make where the feather is, uh, get this pulled off here, where you can see the feather here is long up in here and shorter here. I would probably just be using this up here and using more feathers to make that silhouette. But for the tying purpose here, you get the point. And one of the reasons I really like using this feather is because the rachis will be really small and it'll make a nice head for it. So we just cut off the, the extra fibers here. And if I was really good, I wouldn't have hardly any here, but on this particular one, I had a little bit too much fiber. So we'll just cut them off and, okay. One of the nice things about this is I really want to make this a, a more of a red color in the water. So while I'm using red, I'm also using a black feather of the same thing. And between the two, it really gives it that claret color in the water. Uh, you could you could tie this with green. Heck, I've used colored stuff here. You could make it any color you want. That's the nice thing about sealhead fishing. And with steelhead fishing, it's not about the, 
the color because uh, everybody get hooked up on what the fish want. The fish could care less. It's about what I want. Steelhead don't care. They, they're about attracting some, pull, having something come up there and, and being pulled away from them and they're reacting to it and just taking it because it's fleeing them. That's the whole purpose of this. They're not there to eat. They're just there waiting to be spawning. So to, to get too hung up on colors and I use dark colors and dirty water, don't get me wrong, but uh, it's, you know, some colors do, like chloride, dark colors will work on really, but you know, there's days where I'll use really bright colors, so don't get too hung up on the colors per se, just whatever it makes that you like, because it's all about you and the fish don't care. You know, there's people out there who probably disagree with that, but uh, over the years, I've just, there's an old story out there about the old green sock over on the Ron where a guy was fishing at the mouth of the Ron and here are some Jimmy Green and some other real famous fishermen down there and they were all fishing down there and this guy was just out fishing him. It was below so the fish were coming to him first and and they went down there and asked him what he was using just oh there you go this will happen not paying attention and you just cut your thread off so which is aggravating but you have to deal with it and move on so I'll just put that in there cut off both the thread but anyway on the fishing part of it he goes down there and goes well I just had a didn't have any more materials for my fly so I had an old dirty green sock and I just cut it up and tied it on the fly and he was hitting all those fish on that dirty old green sock fly that he tied so like I said it really you don't have to get hooked up on too much about the fly so I'll just take another feather here and but it is about what you like and this is a pattern that and the bigger silhouette when I'm fishing, the better I like my fly. So that's why I really like this fly because I can make it a really nice big silhouette after it. So I'm going to make sure I tie it on that sh shank again so it locks it into place. And I'll pull it down here. So hopefully this time I won't cut the thread. And it just pulls in there twists it around like I do and it just rolls everything right into place you just twist it one time and roll it round and there it just locks into place just so nice I was taught this particular fly by Glenn Wilson who's a great higher and uh, he'll, he'll do less material than I do. I get kind of hooked up on putting lots of feathers on this particular fly because I just like to. I don't know. Some might do. All right. Now that we have a little bit of color down here, now I'm going to use another, just like my tail here, I'm going to use another uh, blue pheasant and there's lots of different feathers you can use um, just lots of them out there and I'm just going to get rid of a couple fibers here and and what's nice about this is when I get done with this particular feather it's going to be up here like this as you'll see which gives it a nice big silhouette in in the water and this one I'm going to tie on this side instead of the opposite side just because I do it for whatever reason but it works better on the other side but I can see better on this side with the with the lights and everything so I'll just do it on this side and um, I'm going to tie this and every time I go forward with this I'm going to pull all the fibers back and I'm going to do that one slight twist and it just keeps everything rotating forward as you can see here see how the fibers go back 
if I went like this, see how the fibers are going? And then you got them standing up. But if you just twist it over, it just lays right into place and locks in. And that's what we're trying to accomplish. And right now, this color is very subdued with this gray on there. And it almost has a, a color palette of like a, a Lady, Clar Lady Claridon fly. And it's very subdued. But as we put on a couple more feathers here, it will darken it up some. And uh, it'll make the fly really pretty. For what I like, anyway. As you can see, you're starting to get that shape that I'm looking for. And I'm going to put a black one in there to give it that really silhouette that I'm looking for. Hopefully I'm not going too fast that you're not getting what I'm trying to accomplish here for you. But uh, and there'll be a lot of people that are good tires will see this and they'll go, oh yeah, he's doing okay. <laughs> There's such good tires out there that I'm, I feel like uh, this is a good learning experience for me to do this in front of a camera, but I've never done it in front of a camera. So. And I'm going to twist this again. I keep on mentioning that because it locks it into place. If you don't twist, you'll have feathers going forward. Then it's extremely difficult to... Uh, get a small head and then you got fibers in the way. And I'm going to reverse my thread to take some of the bulk out of that. And nip these off. Like I said, there's some people would run dubbing up farther and when they do this they'll only use three feathers up here on the front end. Um, because the way I want my V to shape on that, I use a little bit more feathers. So it all depends on how many feathers you have and how much you want to experiment and have fun with it. Because uh, that's what fly tying is about. Having your, your own fly, tying it, and going out on the river and enjoying the fact that you knew that you tied that fly in the water and you can see how pretty it is in the water. So, there we go. Yeah. Nice thing about what I'm tying here is you get to see the te techniques over and over and over again because this fly is doing the same thing over and over again. And make sure I turn it again. And I don't like some of those fibers in there. This one's not locked into place as well as I would like. Okay, reverse my thread and get all that bulk out of there. Sometimes when I do this, I get a little carried away and my fly will start getting too close to the head. Nice thing about this with these Alec Jackson hooks, you can just take it a little bit like this and it just backs it off off the head a little bit because it gives you a little bit of room. And now I've got enough room to work for a head and I'm going to get rid of these short fibers that I should have pulled off on this fly before I started putting that feather on there but I got a little bit of a hurry and we got two more feathers on this thing and then we'll be completed and on my steelhead flies Here's a feather that I fish on every single one of my flies. I, it's a, I just have to have it. It's just, it's a guinea, and this one is particularly dyed. And I'm going to use this as a throat. And 
usually on throats on the fancier flies and stuff, we have a tendency to go one and a half turns. When you start getting more in that, it doesn't matter for fishing, it's more for presentational stuff. But this, you could palmer, tie it in, fold it over. But in this particular case, I'm going to, um, if you look at this right here and see how it's stacked, when I go to tie it in, this side down here is the part that you're going to go f around in. So when you tie, you've got to get used to knowing what sides. When I first started doing this, I ended up pulling off the wrong side and the feather wasn't any good. So off this, I'm just stripping off the side here. That way I don't have too much material. And I'm also going to tie it right back in. And you've got to lock it in right on the, on the shank again. And then I'm going to tie this in. And it's also, you have to twist it just like before or it, it, it will lay down the wrong way and which this fly wants to do, or this feather. So, nice thing about it is we can fix that. And actually, I blew that, so let's start all over. Because this, the way I just did it there, is gonna end up being two turns. So, uh, let's go back and do this what you do is you turn your vise, or in this case my vise turns, but not all of them do, but I'm going to tie this on the opposite side along that because when you tie it in, you're automatically going to be, the first is going to be a half turn right there, and there's your half, and then you just come all the way around again, and, and I know why. my. I got a little build up on thread right here by the, that's why the, the material is, wants to, and then I'll just come up here and pull the feathers off and strip it off right there. And then tie in my, take the rest of that out of there, that extra material. That's as far as it's gonna go. So we lock it into place. and cut that off. My eyes don't see that very well, but... Okay. As you can see, these fibers right here, I didn't turn it quite like I would like to and it's folded over and actually turned the other way. For steelhead fishing itself, that's no big deal. As soon as it gets in the water, it's gonna get pulled back anyway, but if you got an A box and you're showing out on the river, you wouldn't want that. And I wouldn't necessarily either, but uh, with a little saliva and my fly feather just came off. So that wasn't too good. So it didn't work out very well. So we'll just get another feather. And where did I do with it? There we go. And maybe I'll do it right this time. There we go. We'll strip off the fibers again. Pull a reverse side again. Do a soft loop. There we go, just go forward. Okay, lock it into place. Okay. Cut that off. And all my flies, I, with these grub patterns, and most of my steelhead flies that I fish in the spring and through the summer, I, just my thing, I have to have jungle cock on it. 
It's just something that I have to have. It's my own thing. Okay, well, kind of shape the head real quick. Okay, with this now, it's kind of hard to see in the lighting, but uh, I'm going to take this and I'm going to take my fly and actually put a little slab on my hands and my this will happen if you don't tie your feather in there very good when you do that it wants to come unraveled anyway there we go and in the water I want that to be nice and big so I'm taking the saliva here and I'm pulling these down and see how it all of a sudden it just shaped this there we go just like that I've got a couple fibers that's not sitting down the way I want so we'll just get rid of them and for whatever reason I'm having a little bit there we go all right now with my jungle cock a lot of times people will put their jungle cock way back here or down I like on these because it's a little grub pattern and the, the, the animal that we're talking about or the creature we're talking about is the head is up here and the the feet are up here so it's actually this is what would be facing the fish so the eyes are going to go on the front end of this but it's going to be very small at least that's the way I like to do it so I didn't explain that quite right hopefully you'll you'll get the gist of that and get one from each side of the, the thing here okay and when people tie I'm trying to get as you can see here see how that's bent down you want that one on this side and the one that's bent with that and this will be the opposite side and it's bent that way so we'll, when you tie it you on both sides it'll bend down just a little bit it's just uh, and we're gonna pull off the fibers here the extra fibers get the other one and we're almost done and see how it's bent down this way it'll just make that fit in there real nice so we'll turn my vise and pull it up here Clip off the, the stems. Okay, get my little whip finish tool here. I put it somewhere. Apparently I didn't get it out, so there we go. And I want to make sure that this thread gets nice and flat when I do this, instead of having a lot of twists in it. Here 
Here we go. Get my web fishing tool out, which a lot of the old guys don't use, but I have to. Get a little head cement. And we're getting close. And when I get done with this, I don't, I'm going to make sure that it's a little damp. But I'm going to come back, and I'm and I'll do this when I'm fishing. Uh, I'm going to do this about every 20 to 30 casts because when I'm in the water, I want that silhouette to be. I'm just going to pinch on the tail a little bit, get that shape I want. And when you're in the water, you want that silhouette is like this. So when you're fishing and you're going across the water, that the fly is going this way to the bank. You don't want it this way to the bank because all they're going to do is see the tail end and it's going to look real small. But when you have it across like this, it makes that silhouette big. Hopefully you enjoyed what I did. And that's a grub pattern.